Hello, my most amazing artists. I got a request from one of you to do a special drawing. So one of you requested that I would draw a scene with an elk, a lake, and some pine trees in the background around the lake with a little bit of a sunset. So I thought I would make a quick video to see if I could do that drawing and share some steps with you on how you could make the same drawing. So let's try this. Now before we start our drawing, we have to kind of break this down and do a little bit of practice in all the components. So this student rec asked for a pine tree scene with a lake and an elk in the foreground. So let's talk about pine trees first. I can show you how to draw a couple of really simple pine trees. Remember, pine trees are a triangle shape. They are skinny points at the top and they get wider as they go down towards the base. So if we keep that shape in mind, it should be pretty easy. So we'll do a couple of different types of pine trees and you can pick out which one you like the best. Usually I start out with a vertical line down the center that's going to kind of serve as our tree's trunk. And I am just practicing right now so I'm going to use a pencil and you can use this technique with colored pencils or markers or crayons. Now for this first one I'm going to do kind of an easy one. I'm going to turn it this way and my base is down here and my top is up here and what I'm going to do is a couple of short lines because remember it's very skinny at the top. And as I get towards the bottom, I'm going to create more curved lines. Right now I'm just doing kind of straight lines, and they're getting wider as they go out. And you'll start to see as this tree develops, it's going to get wider. So you see that? And now it's starting to kind of curl up on the sides too. This is a good tree if you want to fill in a lot of space in your background. If you're doing a really big, thick forest, this will take up a lot of space. I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to do the other side of my tree. Remember, I'm doing kind of horizontal lines, very short at first. They're kind of pointing downwards, but not too much. And then they're going to start to widen as I go down my base. And they're going to start to kind of curve up more as I get towards the bottom and the base. You can use a finger or a tissue and you can kind of blend if you're using pencil in the center, but you don't have to do that. So this is a really easy one that it has that triangular shape. It's a big, thick, bushy tree. Let's try another one. I'm gonna do a vertical line down the center again. And this time I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna be making kind of short swooping downwards lines. And at the end, I'm gonna kind of do a couple of vertical lines that get a little bit thicker as they come in. So you can kind of see on this one, I'm going to do another little shorter one up here, it's kind of a curved diagonal line that goes downwards and then I'm doing short little lines that are coming off of the bottom of the curve and getting a little bit thicker as they get closer to the trunk. These are some of the ones that I always see when I go um, to up north Wisconsin and I see a lot of like these tall, tall skinny trees. These ones are probably my favorite type of pine trees. Now I'm going to do the other side. And you'll notice I didn't go all the way down to the bottom of the trunk. Because I'm going to make a thicker trunk at the bottom in a little bit. I try to keep the placements the same because there's trees are pretty symmetrical most of the time. And a lot of times, if trees are in the background of your picture, they aren't going to have a lot of detail because they'll be farther away. So you can kind of make these a little more sketchy. You don't have to draw every individual little pine cone or pine needle because when things are farther away, they start to blend in a little bit more. So you don't have to worry about your drawing being absolutely perfect as long as the idea of a pine tree gets across. So now I'm going to kind of thicken up the trunk a little bit. So I'm going to give it a little bit more of a diagonal line trunk at the bottom. Kind of like that. And I can even make this top a little more pointy. Okay, that is tree number two. And then we can try um, another type of tree. Let's do a more cartoony tree if you wanted to. So one of the ways I start with that is I think of like three triangles stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and make a diagonal line for the point. And then I make two horizontal lines that kind of come inward a little bit. 
And from those lines at the end, I make two more diagonal lines that come out and they're gonna come out a little bit wider for the middle section. So you can see that this end is a little bit longer and wider. Again, this is a more cartoony look for some of you that like to have a little more graphic style. I'm gonna bring in the lines horizontally inwards a little bit. And I'm gonna do one more tier. And this one is going to come out even farther than the middle section. And then a horizontal line to finish with a trunk. Maybe I want to do that style again, but I want it to look a little more cartoony, but not as like triangular. So maybe I'm going to start with a little bit of a curved line and I'll give it a little bit of a bumpy line on the way in. And maybe I won't start right from the end. I might start from a little bit on the inside. Do one like that too. So we have kind of two more cartoony uh, versions and we have some more realistic versions so you can choose which tree you like the best. Next, let's talk about drawing that elk. All right, the next step is let's practice drawing that elk that we want to put into this picture. So here's a picture of an elk I found on Google Images. This is the one I'm going to use for my reference in my drawing. I'm going to be using that drawing as my base for where I'm going to be sketching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that elk down into the most basic shapes. So I'm thinking about his big body. I'm going to start with an oval shape for the body. I'm sketching out placement right now. So I'm not drawing very hard because I know I'm going to erase this later. That elk had kind of a thick neck with a little tiny head on it. So I think um, I'm going to break down the body a little more. So he's kind of got big back legs and he has like this big shoulder here. So let's work on the body a little bit. He kind of has a little bit of a booty sticking out. And then from the leg, he has kind of a thigh. So I've got the circle for the hip and I'm making kind of a curved line down for the thigh. And then I will do kind of a line for the bottom of the leg. Now I'm going to have some grass down here because I do not like to draw feet. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and this is a nice trick is he's going to be standing in some tall grass because elk are out in nature and a lot of times they're standing in tall grass and you can't see their feet anyway. He's going to have another foot kind of poking down back here though so I'm going to draw that other foot that pokes down from the other side of his body. Now give him a little nub for a tail. So that's kind of going to be my back end of my elk for now. I'll come back and add more detail in and erase those lines I don't need later because right now we're just kind of getting it sketched out. So he kind of has like a shoulder I saw so I drew this oval here. This is going to kind of be his front leg so he's going to have his leg come down so that width of the oval I'm going to make kind of diagonal lines that come down a little skinnier for the leg and we'll draw one on the other side so there's going to be a little space here. This is his other leg on the other side of his body. So body looks pretty good. I think pretty basic for an elf or an elf an elk and he's got a sideways oval body circle for the hip kind of like an ovally shape for the thigh and the bottom of the leg. Same thing in the front. It's more of an oval shape. He does not have it as wide as the hip and then we make the legs that come down and don't forget those legs that might be showing on the other side. This is something that might take a couple of practices, so don't be worried if you have to do this a few times. Now this elk has a really long neck, so I'm kind of going from the bottom of this oval here and I'm thinking that his neck is gonna be, and then from the back of his back, it's gonna be kind of straight with a diagonal line that comes up from like the bottom of his belly here. So up and out. This curves just slightly. And then he's gonna have kind of like a circle head with an ovally, shape for his snout. Then I can kind of even that out. And he's got some ears. I'm going to do some little oval ears here. Now what might be the most difficult part, and I didn't leave a lot of room on here, are the antlers. So I'm going to be kind of really loose with these antlers. I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm going to do sticks at first. Comes up from the top of his head. He has one big antler that kind of comes out this way. And then the other big base from his antlers that come out like this and it kind of curves like that. And then I can just draw a couple of spikes or I don't know what you call those, the antlers. 
that kind of come out. Then I can bulk this out a little bit because that is just the stick drawing. So I can kind of go next to this and draw a line as best I can next to it. And I'm just going to thicken out some of these antlers here by drawing lines with it. So I drew the skeleton first of just sticks. Then I go back and I thicken up all of those lines. Now you could draw another antler behind it. Um, you don't have to. Sometimes I think that gets a little challenging. Maybe I'll draw a little bit of this one that's sticking out. And I'm not going to see a lot of the other one. All right, now let's go back in. Let's clean up our elk and make him look very elk-like. So he's got his body, he's got his back. Now I'm just kind of making the lines darker of the ones that I want to keep. So I'm going to keep this back leg like this. I think I'll do this for his shoulder. He's kind of got like a dark color here. He's got a little eye here. And his little snout might be a little bit too long. I'm going to erase that and make it a tiny bit shorter. There's his nose. Um, and then I'm going to go and finesse this a little bit. He's got a belly. He is a fat, fat one. All right. So there is my, my outline of the elk. I can go back and I can erase all those light lines that I was using to kind of figure out where my hips and my body were going to go because those were just to kind of help guide me in creating my elk. And there he is. So my elk has a little bit of a lighter body and he's got like a darker um, thing. So I can do a couple of little wispy lines if I want to make him look a little more furry. could absolutely add a couple of little lines around the edges. So there is my elk. I would practice that a few times. Now let's see if we can put our pine trees and our elk together to create that lake scene. Okay, let's put it all together now. So we are going to be making that pine tree elk lake scene with the sunset in the background. Now I'm not going to walk through through every single step, but I will kind of go through it a little bit. So it is a landscape, which means we have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So I know from when I talked to the student that they wanted to have um, the elk in the foreground, in front of the lake, and then the pine trees around the lake. So I know my elk is in my foreground, so I'm going to draw him first. He is in the thing that's closest to me. That is what the foreground means. So I'm just going to kind of sketch him out really quick. I'm going to follow those same steps. And I'm not going to make him too big. I'm actually going to make him closer to the bottom of my paper. I'm going to start out with the oval body, his circle hip, oval here, and I'm just going to kind of make his thigh with his little leg that comes down. They have a little pop up right there. And then I'm going to do this leg. Remember, I'm going to have some tall grass in the foreground so I don't have to draw his feet. I'm going to give him his neck, his head, and antlers. Just really quick. So he's just sketched out. I'm going to go back and give him more definition later. But now I know where he's going to be. My middle ground is the ground that is between my foreground, which is my elk, and my background or horizon line where my trees would be. So we're going to draw that horizon line first. So the horizon line is where the sky and the land meet. And in this case, it's not going to be land, it's going to be a lake. So that's where my lake is going to be. So I'm going to kind of put some water lines so I know that is my lake. Maybe I will define it a little bit and I'll add some more bushy stuff around my elk so I know where the start of my lake would be. And then on top of that horizontal line where my horizon line is, I'm going to start making my pine tree. So you can use whatever pine tree you liked the best. I'm going to use that... Um, one with the swoopy down branches and I'm going to do a couple of those in the background. So I'm just going to lay those out really quick and I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of detail. And then I'm going to be doing a sunset behind this. So basically I'll be using warm colors, red, yellow, and blue, and I'll be starting out with like my lighter colors, yellow, 
and I'm going to kind of blend them orange and red down towards the horizon line to make that sunset -y feel. So I'm going to speed this video up and you can watch me create this scene now that I have it kind of sketched out. I want to say thanks to Clayton for challenging me to draw a pine tree, sunset, and lake scene with an elk in it. I had a lot of fun, and I hope that you learned a little bit of something, too. If you have something that you want to see me draw, make sure to send me your ideas, and you might see a video pop up soon. Have fun. Goodbye, my most amazing artists.